Okay, so we've relocated. We eliminated that outlet because uh, there was a sink here that changed the plan. So Mitch is making a Mitch patch. He is the inventor of that, I think. <laughs> and so the outlet box is below surface. So we're just going to leave it in place and patch over it with a California patch. And we'll do the same with a little patch up here. And what we've done is eliminated the wire here, cut the wire there. This is dead. Pulled the wire back through the wall and into this remodel box, which is at the same height as that. And the reason for this is a change in plan on the uh, washer dryer locations. And then we also had to pull out the countertop lighting wire and move it over here. So everything worked out very nice and easy. <clears throat> and uh, so we're just about done, gonna screw things back together, mud it, tape it, and then we are putting tile up, right? Okay, quick and easy. Okay, we have finished making the changes here. There is the wire for the counter lights. There is the relocated outlet that came from there. You can make out the patch for it there. So everything is working out very nicely in here. It's a nice laundry room. Lots of cabinets. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to install countertop lighting that mounts under your upper cabinets. So these are the lights that we are installing. These particular lights are made by General Electric at a factory somewhere in China in Brighton is what they're called. So these lights here come with knockouts on the lights to connect them and we are connecting them with a conduit and inside the conduit is the 14 gauge wire that goes between them we leave the uh, non-metallic sheathing on the wire going through the conduit between light fixtures and when it comes into the light fixture then we remove the sheathing so we've already made our connections in this one here. We're not powered up yet though. And we are wrapping these wires together and they come into these push-in connectors here. And then they will connect up to this light. So we need to run another long wire just like this. It's uh, six inches in here to connect to these lights or to these wires and then it goes through the conduit and about two feet of wire to connect up to these and then these are going to get bent back and the wires from this will come six inches into this box. We will push those into these connectors also and then do just like this here over to that location and from here this wire will come in a conduit and go into the hole there so we have our half inch uh, or three eighths conduit I forget what they call it um, but uh, it will go over that wire and into the first in the line fixture so these here, they have two mount screws. There's one, and the other one is on the other side of the switch there. <clears throat> these you need to space away from the front edge and side of the cabinet enough that you can slip this cover back over it. If you have it right up against the cabinet, the face of the cabinet, then you're not going to be able to slip that back in. 
So here's the connectors that we are using. Uh, it's basically all they make. Um, it's got a 3 inch threaded end on this side and a half inch conduit on this side or a 3 8 conduit, whatever they call it. Uh, and then we have these here uh, clamps that are part of the connector. And this is what a connector looks like when it's all together. But we need to take that cover off and we need to trim this round off because it will stick down below. And if you see the clamp there, you can see that we've trimmed off that rounded end and now it isn't visible below the cabinet level and so I've chosen to mount the lights forward on the cabinet rather than against the back wall and a couple of reasons for that one you can tile all the way up to underneath of the cabinet and uh, two if you have the lights right up against the wall they hard light the wall and so it uh, um, can be really bright on the backsplash and some people don't mind it other people do mind it so that's the next step there um, we've got this one here is installed and wired up already and there's the conduit that goes between them these ones do not have link plugs and so you have to uh, do something to keep the wires protected so that kids or anything can't shock themselves and so we will do the same thing over on this side here we have already pre-cut a piece of conduit conduit just slips right into these connectors fittings and then it will go just like that so that is it I will show you the rest of the installation as it goes. All right, we are on the next fixture and we need to get these wires stuffed up in to the fixture. Get everything positioned in here nicely. That should do it. Here's our cover. Need to remove this knockout. And this knockout just goes right over these. See, it'll fit either way. <coughs> Okay, let's get that up there. Oh. So to me, I gotta do this one is the middle of the run, so I have to do both sides. And I have to do both sides of the next one too. Alright, here we go. And there we go. The thinner these fixtures are, the more difficult it is to get your wiring inside of them. I tell you, the people that designed these never actually installed one. And the people that designed these should install them so they know better what they're doing. Okay, that's two. Alrighty. Now we got to do the third one here. And this one is going to be a trick because we have to get this wire to 
come in through the side. Okay, let me go and cut a section of conduit so we have something to work with. Okay, so we're going to set up the last connector. So we need to take that clamp and trim the round end off so that it doesn't protrude down from the fixtures into the line of sight because nobody wants to look at these. So we take a pair of <clears throat> sheet metal cutters and we cut that end off so we have a nice little clamp left here. And then a piece of uh, sheetrock sandpaper, sanding pad sandpaper, and we just deburr it. Then we put it back into the loom clamp. Put the screws back in. We only screwed down a couple turns because the uh, conduit is pretty thick and takes up most of it, most of the opening. Okay. Let me move you. Now, this is going to be kind of a tricky one because the uh, wire is a little on the short side and we have to make a tight turn here. So I'm not sure how we're going to exactly do that. But, okay, so here is my section of conduit, 18 inches long. It will go into the wall. When you cut these things, you want to take your utility knife and deburr, take all the sharp little prickly things off of the conduit edges there. And then I sand everything real good, smooth it out a bit, and Put it in the put the conduit into the fixture and screw the screw on down. So we are going to be handling the power wire here in a second. So we will just take a look at the switch and make sure that that switch is in the off position. You never know if anyone did something while you're not looking. Okay, and we are in the off position, so let us shove our wire into the conduit. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Teddy. I hope I can make this. So let's do this trick here. I'm just going to cut the wire, cut a wire a little bit. Actually, no, we're not. We're just going to pull this on. Let me think this through. Keep my section of wire good. All right. So we have that. Now we are going to trim that. tape as possible. Okay, let's pull it on through now. <laughs>
Okay. So you have to keep a little trick up your sleeve all the time because you're going to be running into things all the time. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> That's it. That's how you do it. Gonna make another connection for the next set of lights in the kitchen.